I'm going to continue the, the theme that we've been working through on strategies and tactics and our unseen adversary. The greatest challenges of our lives are not the physical things that we see and the ones that we typically focus our time and attention on. I believe the greatest threats to our peace, our well being, to our eternity are really motivated in a spiritual realm. I'm more convinced of that tonight than I've ever been. Uh, in the last three weeks, I've made two trips to New York. I'm sorry, two trips to Washington, D.C., and one trip to New York. And I have met with hundreds of pastors. Um, I, I've been invited to do a series. I was, I've been invited to do some programs with policymakers and thought leaders. Um, well, I, and we, we just finished the first one. And we were able to do an interview with Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina, who they expect to announce his candidacy for the presidency next week. And then um, we were able to do an interview with Robert Kennedy Jr. Um, and, I, I, and we've met with some other people around those things. And I can tell you, I came home from all of those places more convinced than I've ever been that the solution will not begin in Washington, D.C. The solution will begin in the hearts of God's people. Now, it, it could ultimately be reflected in those places where policies are made. But if we expect them to lead with policy that will change the context of what's happening around our kitchen table, we're deceived. That's just not the way the system is structured. They, they are a reflection of what's happening in our lives. And as long as we tolerate pornography in our children's libraries at school and the mutilation of our children when they're minors by a medical system that sees it as a profit opportunity and we don't care enough to defend our unborn children from those that would prey upon them for comfort and convenience, it's ludicrous to imagine politicians to fix the problems. They will follow our lead. Amen, church. Amen. Now, I, I, we're going to have to move beyond just passively saying that really shouldn't happen and use our voices and our energy and our strength. If your children are in school or your grandchildren are in school, the people in those schools need to know what you think and believe. Amen. You want to be one of those people. I'm tired of people being more vocal and more assertive and, and more determined with ungodliness and wickedness and immorality and perversion than God's people are determined to see righteousness and purity be extended to our children. Amen. And I'm really tired of Christians that want to do another Bible study on the book of James or the ninth chapter of the book of Romans rather than engage our culture with the truth of God's word. How many sermons do we have to hear before we'll decide to live out the truth that we know? And I'm an advocate for studying your Bible, as you know. I like to read mine. But the purpose of learning the truth is that we can live it out in the world in which God has placed us. And we have avoided that for so long that now we find ourselves on the brink of being silenced. And when that happens, the devastation that will come will come quickly. And I, I am concerned for us. There are some good things that have happened lately. I, I want to recommend the book. I don't do that a lot of times. This was not a Christian book, but I read it in preparing for an interview. Uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. wrote it. It's called The Real Anthony Fauci. It's a very well-documented book. It's well-footnoted. It's not just opinion. Um, we've been told to follow the science for a long time. There's a lot of science in that book. It's worth the read. There was a tremendous amount of manipulation involved with COVID. No doubt the virus was real. I'm not questioning that or suggesting it wasn't. But the policies that grew up around it had very little to do with science. But the truth is being told if we have the courage to read it and to look at it and to consider it. It's uncomfortable. And, but the, but the, the best way I know forward when you have been in, in those places is to humble ourselves 
then repent and then find a way through that. Uh, I think another piece of good news, we've been praying for months. We've been praying since the pandemic started that the truth would be told in the public square. And there have been many instances of that happening. And I think we had another piece of that this week with the Durham report. It, it's really good, no, good news to know that the Russians did not manipulate our election, that they weren't colluding with the sitting president. That's wonderful news. Irregardless of who you like or who you vote for, that's very good news to know that. And after a, a multiple year investigation and multiple millions of dollars being spent in that regard, you know, we should celebrate that truth that makes its way into the public square. That's not a political statement or advocating for a party or a person. That kind of truth matters. Amen, Pastor. I can do both sides of this, it's okay. But, but God is moving, but at the center of what he intends to do is the heart of his people. And if we are determined to stay focused on the quality of our vacation and the ball teams that our children get to participate with and the labels and the clothing we wear more than the moral tone and the spiritual life of the culture in which we live, we are by definition idolaters. And I've spent my life in the Christian church. I have a love for the church. But I also feel like I'm at least entitled to an opinion. And I think it's safe to say we have been a bit distracted. But God is awakening us. I meet people every week now across this nation of men and women who are awakening to the opportunities of this generation. And I pray for myself as well as you that we will not miss this unique time when God has placed us in history. Amen. I didn't get to ride the streets of Boston with Paul Revere. And I didn't get to travel with Paul on his missionary journeys. And I didn't get to be there when George Whitfield preached in such an amazing way to those marvelous crowds of people. Or when Charles Finney called the generation to repentance. But God did call our name in the 21st century. And we're writing a story now let's write a story, a legacy of faith and courage and boldness and determination that the generations who follow us will be inspired by, Amen. not have to make an excuse for. You willing to be that kind of person? Amen. Me too. Me too. Hey, this is Pastor Allen. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, like it, and most importantly, share it with your friends. If you want to be notified when there's new content and we post new material, if you'll just subscribe to my channel and hit the bell, you'll get the notification. Most of all, I pray God blesses you as you continue on your spiritual journey and open your heart to the Lord. God bless.